Hey, hey, hey. Hey, everyone. It's, uh, it's a beautiful old day here in Melbourne town at the studios of Radio PVS. I uh, thought I'd do a little walkthrough of the studio setup. Had a look the other day on YouTube for you know, examples of people's home radio station setups. And there was There's a lot out there, uh, but there's doesn't seem to cover everything that I thought could be covered maybe. So I thought maybe I'll just walk you through my setup um, to sort of show you how how I've set things up with the stuff that I've got and uh, might be helpful to peeps. So here we are at the wonderful Radio PVS. This is really the uh, meat and potatoes of it. Maybe I think first thing to go through, let's go through the inputs, how the inputs work. So everything comes through this desk, basically. I picked this desk up cheap when a company was going out of business probably 10 years ago. <laughs> I didn't really have a use for it, but it was, I thought I can't really go past the deal. And now I'm putting it to good use. So good stuff. Everything goes into this desk and this desk then feeds the computer and the computer goes out to the internet. And that's that's the really super basics of it. Um, let's have a look at the inputs. Channel one, I've just got the microphone. It's a, what have I got, a Rode NT1, I think. I bought it not just for radio stuff, I bought it for you know recording instruments and vocals and stuff like that, but works fine for this. Um, that's uh, the mic channel. So the mic actually goes first into this DBX uh, mic processing strip. What is it, 286S? Uh, it's got your yeah, input there, it's got phantom power, uh, got a little compressor, a little DSR, little enhancer, expander and a gate, and your output levels there. Excuse the truck going past. And it comes out of the processor into channel one. That's the mic. Uh, mic channel two. I don't have a microphone set up in at the moment. Uh, maybe one day when I get another one, but at the moment that's actually just a return channel for this uh, Melos echo chamber tape delay that I picked up off, uh, off eBay, pretty cheap. Um, so that's just a bit of fun and game, a bit of space echo and using the channel two there as the return. Um, other, so that's basically an augs. Um, as you can see, it's going into two channels because I run out of stereo line inputs. So it's just going into two mono channels, panned left and right. So that's basically, yeah, an augs cable. So you can plug a phone into it or you know, another computer, whatever device you want to get input in. CD1, CD2, that's coming from this Newmark CDN77 setup that's going on there. Uh, that's the sort of control interface with the decks down there, little USB stick poking out. So the CDs go in there. Got a channel for the turntables. Now we're onto the, um, we've got the stereo line inputs. Uh, the turntables are set up over here. So they've got their own just independent setup. Um, sweet 1200 and a piece of junk from cash converters I probably got 15 years ago uh simple setup um you know not a superstar dj by any means but um they're good to have on hand so they all come in collectively into that channel there next one 11 and 12 is the playout system po for playout um and that's this program that's running now so that just runs 24 7 with all the automation the jingles the songs Sweepers, pre-recorded shows that other presenters send in, um, all comes from there, and it all goes into that channel. And then the last two channels, basically, they those channels are the outputs of the sound card. So this little sound card down here, Native Instruments Audio Control, I think it is, something starting with K. That's what they like to do. Um, that's got three stereo outputs, so one and two, three and four, and five and six. So the outputs of those come to these channels. Output one and two of the computer goes in to this desk here, and output three and four goes into the desk. The playout system's on five and six. So in the settings of this program, I just tell it to send the audio to channels five and six, and that's what it does. Everything else in the computer basically almost everything else is set to go to the main outputs one and two. So if I just push play on a random MP3 or, you know, on a browser or whatever, anything that makes sound in that computer pretty much goes into this channel here. So that can then go to air if it needs to. 
same with three and four, but that's a kind of special one. Um, and then the kind of output stage of the desk, I guess. So that's the main, I guess, maybe you call it the control room monitors. Um, and each of these is assigned on each channel with these buttons. So any of these channels can be sent to left and right. That's this guy. So this one here. I don't know if you can hear that music, but there's music coming out of that because it's going to the speakers. Uh, you can also send it to group bus one and two. This is here. Or it can go to the three and four output, which is here. Uh, now, where do they go? Good question, Matt. One and two, when that's depressed on any of the channels, that goes to the one and two input of the sound card. So if I want to record anything just to say Ableton or Cubase or Audacity or whatever, any of those channels up there can be sent to inputs one and two. Um, then on whatever software I'm using up here, if it's Ableton, just pull that up, make the source input one and two from the sound card. So anything with that little button depressed will then go to Ableton. And the same theory applies for three and four. Three and four, through this bus here, go to input three and four, which is around the back of this sound card. And um, that input is actually where the internet kind of takes place. Um, it actually does something else first. It goes, you can depress this, see the playout system here. That's going to channel three and four to this group bus, it goes out of this bus, and then first it actually goes to this Apex Compeller. Um, it's a model 320, not a 320A. This one just came up cheap again. But this is kind of like a um, automatic gain control limit, limiter, leveler kind of thing. Just sort of keeps, um, it tries to keep the levels of songs pretty equal between songs. Um, so everything goes into that first, then goes into the computer, into three and four, and then that goes to the internet. So we'll have a look at that. Once we've got it going to three and four, it's going to come into this program first. So this is, uh, what is it? Th Thimeo? Thimeo? I've never said it out loud. <laughs> we'll say Thimeo Stereo Tool. It's a free program. And uh, it's got a bunch of presets and a bunch of cool things you can mess around with. But essentially, it's, it's just a kind of big processing center. So it's got a bit of automatic gain control as well. You've got a little bit of bass equalization, multi-band compressor, um, single band compressor. You can see at the top here, that's the, the input signal coming in and that's the output signal. Um, I try and keep things pretty transparent. Um, it, there's a bit of a boost sort of overall uh, when songs sort of change, you can see the difference with the AGC, but a lot of people sort of max this out big time and, you know, have it really pumping like FM radio style, but I don't like that. I want to keep as much dynamics as I can. So, um, yeah, it's not doing, not doing heaps and heaps and heaps. It looks like the multiband compressor is working pretty hard, but A being the input and the output, it's, it's pretty transparent. I'm pretty happy with the setup at the moment. So, uh, just to, just to go over that again, anything here in the input section that gets switched to bus three and four will go out of the desk, into the AGC, into the sound card, into this program, and then the output of this program goes to this virtual cable. So this is uh, software you can get for free from VB Audio, and essentially like just another cable but within your computer the reason for this is because i want the output of this to go to two places first place that it goes well not the first but simultaneously uh it goes into a channel on voice meter banana um you can see the input coming in here and then that shoots it back out to output three and four if we remember that's this guy so basically if i'm listening to this channel through the speakers when it's patched to left right the main source here that allows me to listen to whatever's going to air so that's essentially just monitoring all of this stuff going out of here into there up here through there and i can hear it it also has to go to the actual encoder so this is playout one's live stream encoder and this is how it gets out to the internet essentially 
So you can see here that the device that it's listening to is that cable output. So that's coming from, uh, from this guy. And simply from here with all your details plugged in, that's how it goes to the internet, yeah. So I think that's, hopefully that's kind of helpful. That's um, how it sort of runs here. It's a bit confusing. It confuses me a lot of the time as well. <laughs> I'm trying to remember what's going and coming to from here and there and whatever. And you're sort of using the one computer as a source and also as the output. Um, <clears throat> but it all kind of works. I think the key is just having um, a sound card with multiple ins and outs, stereo ins and outs. So you can be sort of flexible. I guess the thing that's different here from like maybe a normal radio station, oh, not so much, because you can see that like, you know, left and right, that's kind of your studio monitors. Three and four is your program bus, and one and two you can maybe say is your audition bus. So I can do production work through one and two, while the playout system is still going to air through the three and four program channel. So I think that's about it. If you've got any questions, let me know. Um, radiopvs.com is where you can listen to all this bollocks going on and um, yeah have a good old day peeps might go outside and have some lunch I think <laughs>